Well hello, excitement this morning because here's a cord I've been wanting for a while. It comes in this tiny little package. It's the Diatone uh, GTR90. Tiny little quad. It's diddly. Look at it. And this was, um, well, what I picked up on the fact is this would apparently run up to a 4S battery, which is just mental on something this size. That said, it's so light, I haven't got any 4S batteries that are lighter than the actual quad itself. Uh, and I do notice that most people have been going the 3S on it. So I think I will probably go with that for now, because power to weight ratio is pretty important. But uh, some interesting things on here, certainly. We're looking at 1104 6000 kV motors. We've got a micro CCD camera. Uh, not run cam one, one of their, their own ones. We've actually got a current sensor just underneath here on the XT30. What is quite staggering is what they've managed to get in this stack here. Aside from the uh, ESC board, which is kind of regular, they've also got in here a Fury F4 uh, board and an original TPS Unify uh, VTX, which means obviously we can use smart audio to change channels, which is great because we don't have to go in with a, uh, I say a finger, it wouldn't be a finger, it'd be some tiny thing to try and change things. And we don't have to put like LEDs or anything to see what we're seeing. So it's, it's useful that because what this doesn't come with is a receiver inbuilt, so we need to put one on. We seem to have this little flying cable around, which I think is probably what we need to connect to. I think we're probably going to use this uh, FreeSky XM rather than XM Plus because I'm going to be in fairly close uh, and I can I can still flash the firmware with RSSI on there so that would be useful. But what else do you get in the box? You get a spare set of prop and prop guards. I can't imagine flying this indoors though, it's just so powerful it would be mental. Get stickers. You'll notice all the um, parts are in this sort of plastic and bits. They give you a spare of that just in case you crash and break it and you can slot all your bits in. We also have uh, an XT30, cable ties, spare screws, three bags off, spare bits of additional mounting, the camera mount, the antenna mount, and this. I think this uh, little 3M bit is to go on the bottom here to provide a sort of um, a friction based thing so when you put the battery on there it will stick fast instead of having to use velcro and stuff. I say spare set of props, it's the only set of props. These are using quite big free bladed 2030s. Bit of a question mark about are these any good? The Ditone amazingness of providing really great equipment and rubbish props may continue. Um, fortunately we've got plenty of gem fans 2035s which I do like but we'll try these, we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, so let's get this built, let's get the receiver in, let's see how the beta flight config looks and uh, yeah, take it for a spin. Join me in a sec. Alright, we're all together and here's the finished product. So there was one thing I forgot to mention when I was running through the components because generally speaking a lot of components are really good, maybe apart from these props, but there's a real glaring omission on this one and that's the lack of a beeper. You'll see most little quads on the sort of 90 to 100 mil thing have sort of this flat back panel which has got this little board which has got LEDs and uh, a beeper on it. This just goes to a point, it doesn't have anything like that. So there's no LEDs and there's no beeper. You can't have this, or something this size that's gonna fly outside really quickly without a beeper. It's insane. It'll get lost, it practically get buried in my carpet, let alone long grass. So I looked in my box of spares and I had this beeper and the problem is, it's huge. So I thought, rather than use that, I'll go a little bit experimental and I'll try using the D-Shot beeper command. So what this will do is cause the motors to, uh, the beacon basically. Motor beaconing's been in BL Heli for a long time. It's something that's kind of set up if you left them long enough, they'd start twerping at you. But this has gone into, I think it's from, yeah, from Beta Flight 3.2 it had the specific D-Shot commands which includes turtle mode and uh, motor beaconing. However, wasn't um, something you could just do without doing a few changes, so this is what I had to do. First off, D-Shot commands are in BL Heli firmware from 16.67 I think. Um, this one had 16.6 all over, so I went in and I upgraded that to the latest version which is 16.7. 
Now, as far as beta flight goes, this runs the uh, Fury F4 OSD firmware, and this is running 321. Not the latest, but I figured, you know, that's pretty up to date, so I wasn't going to mess with that. Um, and it will support the, the D-Shot commands I needed. So just to quickly run through the configuration, um, in the ports, everything was set up nicely. So UART 1 is, is set for S-Bus. On UART 3, we have the TBS Smart Audio. Um, I made some little changes here and there. For example, I did motor stop on the configuration, um, and I think it had air mode always on. But um, it runs DSHOP 600, has an 8K, 8K loop. The pit tuning, uh, according to the Diatone website, it's been tuned especially for free S, so if you do fly for us, retune it. So given that, I was going to leave these pit as is and see how it goes, and I can always change them as I go. So then it came to the modes. All it had set up was uh, an arm switch very high on Ox1. So I changed it so I've got arm, angle, I added the beeper, um, and obviously air mode. And just for the hell of it, I put turtle mode, or as it's called, flip over after crash. I, I have to say, I've never used turtle mode before, mainly because where I fly is long grass. And if that's buried in the grass, all you're going to do if you try and flip is smoke your motors. But I thought, you know, what the hell, I, I've not used it before, I want to make sure it works, I know how it works, so I added that in. Uh, lastly, I messed with the OSD just to make it how I wanted it. So I tested that out and it didn't work, so there was one extra thing I needed to do to enable that, and that's to set this command called a beeper D shot beacon tone. By default, this is set to zero, which means it doesn't make any tone at all. So um, the, the advice on this is like five might be too loud and might overheat the motors, try three. So I've set it to three as uh, my test and I'll, I'll show you what that sounds like. I've got a 3S uh, EA Sheen battery here, which is about the right size for it. This is a 550, significantly smaller than the, the XF 550s I've got but also significantly smaller than an 850 Forest. This is my smallest Forest, which weighs significantly more than the entire quad, so I can't use that one. Anyway, if we plug this guy in, okay, so on the, my uh, radio here, I've got self level and then beeper mode. So it's not a bad beeper, it's reasonably loud. I don't think it's as loud as a proper be beeper, but hopefully I'll find it. So I would say if you had a beeper that was a little bit better then stick it in there, the right size. But it, it does seem like they should have got one in there. Anyway, the FreeSky XM is on, obviously I've gone with a, a sort of long antenna and I flashed that with the RSSI on the 8th channel so I've at least got an idea because th the last one I used, and I think I used this one, this ran out of range pretty quickly but at least if I got the RSSI I'll get a, a clue of if it's gone down or not. So next thing to do, of course, get out there and fly it. An instantaneous cut will take us to the field when, in some days' time, I will fly this. And off we go. Now, normally I'd record a little GoPro intro and some line of sight stuff, and I did in this one. But unfortunately, I had a problem, and I ended up with four zero-length files on the GoPro there. Uh, but, you know, it hovered fine. Um, and the other thing I was trying to say is I've had a very short weather window here. It's still gusting around 16 to 20 miles an hour. But I was kind of a little bit sheltered here, so I figured it was okay. So we're up and at them, and as you can see, it's kind of flying okay. There's a little bit of noise on the camera that I picked up. The VTX is operating at 25 milliwatts. But one thing I do like is the look of the camera. It's pretty wide angle. It seems to handle the light very well. But the receiver was the big problem here. If you notice, I'm just going down to the end of the field, something I do on little mini quads with those tiny D8 receivers, and watch the RSSI drop here to zilch. And that was me trying to pull up and obviously failing because there was no signal left. So back again on the same battery. And I also don't know why the uh, voltage is flashing like that. Have I got some alarm set up by accident without noticing? I'll have to check that out. So my impression was that it was seemingly flying quite nicely. My worry was, of course, that it was going to go out of range and drop out of the sky any moment. It was also sucking the battery away very quickly. So this is me coming in for a landing. Um, probably the, the well, easily the best of batteries. This is the original uh, EA Sheen 550 3S. And I'm just trying to land on the transmitter case here because somebody stole that nice little pad I was using to land on. 
So we're up on LiPo number two, and this is one of the heavier XF batteries, and I noticed it immediately that things just didn't feel right. Um, the quad was having a bit more problem in holding its position. It was certainly having issues getting enough thrust when it wanted to go up. It still managed to go quite nice forward speed, but yeah, trying to go up was difficult. And when I do this manoeuvre here, I was just going upwards, and I noticed it, it came back too far. It's like the battery dragged it down and we're on the grass again. So unfortunately with these free XF batteries it was all kind of the same thing. It felt heavy, it felt a little bit awkward and it felt like the weight was shifting around so it didn't fly at all well on these. As far as the tune goes it seems pretty good. We're, we were facing some pretty strong winds here and it's managing to handle things nicely. You would have just noticed in that roll there it was all a bit out. The um, Super 8 is not what I'd normally set it to, but I thought I'd try it on this one. Um, and it's fairly responsive, it's just not quite my normal timings for doing stuff. So I kind of flew back and forth a bit and checked out how it felt. That was just a case of it feeling heavier than it should as we came down there. Really weird situation. So unfortunately we were a case of putting four batteries through it and really not thinking I got a good full impression from it. Well that was a short and not particularly sweet experience flying this thing and this was absolutely covered in grass which I've only just finished cleaning up now. I kind of feel like I can't finish the review here because it's not really had a fair go. Some of it my fault, some of it its fault if you like. So I know that people don't like part twos but I'm going to have to come back and do a part two and correct a few things. So the things I'm going to do, I'm going to swap out the XM with an XM Plus. Uh, and give out complete on XMs. Maybe I've just got a duff one. If people are out there flying XMs and they're getting decent range, then let me know. But too experienced in this one's now, both around 100 metres when it just fail safes. Um, and if you're lower to the ground, you haven't got much chance of recovery there, unfortunately. So that will go. Props. I was intending to change on the field. I took some um, Genfan 2035s with me. But this centre hub section is actually a little bit thicker than these. So when I put the screws in here, they didn't actually reach and connect to the, the motor. So I couldn't actually do that. The other thing um, I wasn't happy with was the weight of the batteries I was flying. Now I started with this uh, Eosheen 550 Freestyle. That was pretty good. Um, and I took some measurements on my kitchen scales that I borrowed. I got the quad of 76 grams. This battery has 44 grams. Things felt a lot worse when I use these bigger, again, 550 XFs, which um, on the Banggood website they misquoted the weight. These come out at 64 grams, which I think is way too heavy for this. And I noticed that it, it felt like the battery was shifting around. Sometimes it would sort of go up backwards and stuff. Some of that might be the battery shifting around, some of it might be this. Um, this battery strap which I'm not super keen on because you can't get it as tight as you want to. But I think these batteries, no no no, these are too heavy. I've only got one of these but I have got um, a couple of these SPC Maker 350 milliamp hour free cells uh, and these are 38 grams. So I'll try some of these to see if it feels a little more light on its feet. My, my sort of impression was that it had a lot of power there. Um, it, it was nice and fast going along but it didn't, it didn't want to go upwards especially especially with those big batteries, it was really struggling to get much vertical lift there. One thing I'm pleased that did work very well was the D-Shot Command beeper using the motors. Uh, it was fairly loud, I could hear it from a distance away, so I was able to recover in my crashes easily enough, so that's a good thing. So I feel it's got potential, but I felt that I wasn't getting that out of it from the setup I had. So yeah, I'll do all those things. Um, another thing to do as well is to calibrate the current sensor, since I've never tried that before, so that'd be interesting. Um, and I'll come back and I'll have another better fly with it. In the meantime, I need to thank Banggood for sending this to me for review. Uh, and of course, there's a linky down below if you want to check it out for yourself. But I'll be back in part two once I've got all the bits sorted and we'll see if it's improved. I'll see you then. Bye for now.